team report. What's happening, Heather? Uh, you lost both teams? Get a grip on this operation, Heather. That's bored. Read like the SF. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in Bourne. He has to be put down. And you obviously cannot do what has to be done. I am taking operational control. He will defend these police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the ticket. We enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every member should go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is November 29th, and we're coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you for tuning in to Nonpartisan Liberty for All. We're on weeknights, Tuesday through Thursday, now at 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern on the Nonpartisan Liberty for All media and radio network, which now runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week, although we had some issues today uh, with it running during the day. So I apologize for anyone who tried to tune in. And you can listen live on Spreaker.com and NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com to the live stream and to the archives immediately following the show on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On Nonpartisan Liberty for All, we promote self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. We are, of course, always happy to hear from you, although we seldom hear from people. So if you have something to say or like to comment or questions or whatever, uh, you can call us at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. Or you can Skype into the show as soon as I actually log into Skype. (laughs) Um at username nonpartisan liberty for all and of course you can get all that information all the contact information and more at nonpartisan liberty for all.com where we also have articles uh blogs and various other things uh as well as the email address if you'd like to email or again if you forget the phone number or Skype name which if you remember the website, you shouldn't forget the Skype name, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. And there's also a chat room, and I can see the chat room. I usually don't uh, type anything in it unless anybody else goes in there. And I try to respond when I can. So, But if you have a question and or a statement or whatever, something you want me to bring up on the air, and... Um, you don't want to call in or be on the air. You just want me to address something. Uh, just type your question there, and I will definitely see that. So um, that is available as well. Or hopefully uh, if you go in there, other people will go in there and you can chat or something. Or I'll try to uh, <laughs> chat in there. Uh if somebody enters the chat room. Anyway, um, tonight we're going to talk all about, I guess, a subject that's been on the news a lot. And I think I know why. I, I think it a lot of it 
uh, well, there's two reasons, I think. One has to do with the uh, president-elect or uh, whatever the fuck you want to call him, the ruler, the uh, unappointed ruler, the ruler without consent, uh, Donald Trump. And his one of his uh, supporters and now members of his transition team, Steve Bannon. And the other has to do with a conference, I guess, that they had where they were, according to the person who ran the conference, kind of joking around and did a Hitler salute. But the alt right i didn't realize it was on as much as it was and one of the things i i don't really like to talk about stuff that is on all over government media and i don't really know that it is that much i mean i I don't know because i don't watch it but i've heard in the videos that I've been watching. So I, I go a lot to YouTube and check out what uh, alternative media and go right to the source. So in this circumstance, of course, Richard Spencer uh, is the one who ran that conference. He's one of the names in the one of the big names, I guess, in the alt right who proclaims he coined the term alt right. And then, of course, I watched some of their conference. I went to uh, another, I'm not going to promote them because of their, uh, ideology, but, uh, a alt-right radio, internet radio station, I guess, or internet radio, whatever. Um, they, they do uh TV, I guess as well. But, um, so I, I did a lot of research and listened to, a lot of people's point of view, I, except government media, I stayed away from that because I know what I'm going to get from that. They take one clip and then they exploit it and try to push an agenda. So I stayed away from that. But I did actually watch a lot of this shit, probably hours and I would not watch more like listen, but probably hours and hours of it, to be honest. So um, I did do my my research on this one. So, excuse me. Uh, I was like going to cough up something. Had to mute myself there for a minute. Okay, I'm good. Um, so I did do, do a lot of research on this. I wanted to give a fair, I guess, evaluation of them. And I had never, I heard of the term, that's about it, what it stood for, what they were about. I had no idea. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I did. I, it's. I'm trying to remember what I um cuz I remember hearing the term and just thinking maybe it was just what I thought but I didn't know details I'll put it that way I didn't know much about them if anything but I did hear the term alt right and I think I thought they were just ultra conservative or I don't know uh but anyway I wanted to approach this from more of a research point of view and then come to a conclusion based upon that, not the other way around, uh, which I do a lot, but it's based on knowledge that I already have. So being that I didn't have a lot of knowledge on them, I wanted to go into it and say, all right, I haven't heard of these people or or I don't know a lot about these people so let me see what the fuck they're about and I know whatever they're about I'm not going to agree with them anyway because unless um, they're talking about not having government although what was weird was this fucking radio station that I'm talking about where I got um, a, a lot of this stuff where 
so-called uh, leaders in this movement uh, um, go on. And it's pretty popular. I think it gets, you know, 20,000 views or whatever on, on some of the shows. But, and they had filmed the whole uh, conference. But Larkin Rose was on this program, I think, before his first retirement, because I'm assuming he's come out of retirement. And I didn't get that. Now, I don't know. One, why they would want to have Larkin Rose on there, because the interview is like a regular, you know, you listen to Larkin Rose do an interview anyplace else. It's the same thing. They didn't ask him about alternative right ideas. They didn't talk nothing about that. They talked about what Larkin Rose talks about, you know, government being a mafia, extorting you and all of that type of stuff. So... I don't know if they used to be libertarians and now they're all bright people or what, but it's totally different. And we'll also talk about there were people saying that they're libertarian, but they're all right and grouping libertarians in with the all right. Not a lot, but enough to bring it up. And that's just totally fucking nuts right there. So we'll talk about that. So I'm going to talk about their, what they stand for really, and go through all of that and refute uh, a lot of their stuff and also give my opinion on it. So we're going to get really into the details um, on all of this. So... Well, my alarm is going off. Like, what's going on? But before I get to that, I did want to mention that there was a tweet that Donald Trump tweeted out. And actually, before I do that, let me just play a short, we'll play one clip of a introduction to what the alt right is. It's just a short one and then I'll play the the uh other clips I have later, but this is just a short 5 minute clip. So we'll be right back after this nonpartisan libertyforall.com Hello. I'm Jared Taylor with American Renaissance. What's the alt right or alternative right? Millions of people heard the term for the first time when Hillary Clinton mentioned it in a campaign ad last week. A campaign chair that ran a website that has become a field day for the alt-right, which is racist and all sorts of other ists. The alt-right, which is a sort of dressed up in suits version of the neo-Nazi and white supremacist movements. She said it's full of terrible people and she tried to connect it to Donald Trump. So the mainstream media are now full of stories explaining the alt-right. Even a Japanese newspaper interviewed me the other day about the Aruto Raito. As a long-standing member of the alt-right, this is how I see it. We are a broad dissident movement that includes many different websites, organizations, and viewpoints. Some members hold distinctive positions on sex roles, trade and free markets, forms of government, and foreign policy. But they all agree on one thing. Equality is a dangerous myth. The alt-right is united in rejecting the current dogma that all races are equal. Races are different. They differ in average levels of intelligence. They do not build identical societies. And there is no reason to think non-whites can maintain Western civilization the civilization that whites created. And most people prefer the culture created by their own race and prefer to be around people like themselves. Blacks, Hispanics, and Asians express this preference all the time, and everyone thinks it's fine. It's only whites who are thought to be immoral if they openly prefer the culture, society, and people of Europe. Now, if you're shocked, by what I've said so far, you're not part of the alt-right. 
Not yet. But just wait. We're growing all the time. The alt-right is eager to have the honest dialogue on race that former Attorney General Eric Holder and others claim to want. Well, they're not sincere. They want to exclude everyone who disagrees with them. Honest dialogue is meaningless if everyone already agrees. Let me give you a little alt-right history. The term was first used in 2008 and came out of the political discussion group, the H.L. Mencken Club. And the people who first popularized the expression were Richard Spencer and Paul Gottfried. In the last eight years, the alt-right has expanded enormously. It's now closely associated with websites such as V-Dare, Taki's Magazine, my own American Renaissance, and many bold new sites such as Radix Journal, Social Matter, The Right Stuff, Red Ice Radio, The Political Cesspool, and The Alternative Right. Many of the most creative and dynamic members are the alt-right Twitter army, always ready with clever memes and smackdowns against liberal journalists. Most of the people in the alt-right, especially the younger ones, have to hide their identities because of our oppressive political atmosphere. Only a tiny fraction of the alt-right can afford to be open about their views because if you dissent publicly, you can be fired from your job, kicked out of school. It's like the dissident movement in the old Soviet Union despite the fact that we claim to live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Hillary Clinton and the press have tried to tie the alt-right to Alex Jones and to various people associated with Breitbart.com and to Donald Trump himself. This is dishonest. None of these people has ever taken up the cause of white identity or talked openly about race and IQ. We may be sympathetic to people such as Steve Bannon of Breitbart and Donald Trump because of their views on immigration, but they have never spoken up for explicitly white interests. If you want to learn more about the alt-right, the biological reality of race, or the importance of white racial consciousness, please... Man. 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 Nonpartisan liberty for all. Just wanted to play a quick clip. I also had to just run and do something real quick at the same time. So that kind of worked out well. But uh, that was one of the, I guess, I don't know, major figures in the party. Uh, I, or I don't know if you'd call them a party in the whatever the fuck they are in the group that was i have to look his name up but i do have him listed uh as one of these uh, jared taylor so he's uh older um he was actually on stefan molyneux show and we'll get to that and the uh the people that Stefan Molyneux, who's supposedly an anarchist, which I don't believe that, and maybe he was at some point, uh, has on his show and what they have said on his show. And he continues to have them on. And, you know, I believe in free speech. And I don't think people should be fired from their job for their views or so... For instance, in this, uh, whatever it was, this uh, seminar, comp- conference, I guess you'd probably call it. So I, I listened to a lot of this conference who had these different speakers. He was one of them, the Richard Spencer, who we talked about, who is, I guess, really the the figurehead for the alt-right, the real alt-right, not the, there's another guy, Milo, who we'll talk about as well, um, who I guess is sympathetic to the alt-right. I, I, I don't know how you can be, and who kind of denied who they really were. Now, everybody else says something else. So I'm pretty confident in the things that I'm going to go through that 
is are, are all parts of the alt right. I mean, these are all things that you, I would say, have to believe in now I, I, to be part of the alt right. Now, I realize on certain things, you know, people are going to disagree, but the majority of this is the basis for the alt right that I'm going to go through. So you can't re- disagree with it and be part of the alt right. It just it doesn't fit. And there's so many contradictions and stuff like that. So I know I said I was I'm going to go through this kind of uh, I'm going to be as fair as possible. Um but I've gone through it and come to conclusions um going through it obviously. But I will be fair to them because there's some things that I think are unfair in how they were or are at least how they claim to be portrayed in the media and how they are or at least seem to be or what I've gotten from them. So we'll start with what I'd call their platform, I guess. I mean, they're... Richard Spencer calls it more of an identity, uh, racial identity politics, I guess. So it's not a political party, although it, it kind of sounds like one, but I guess conservatives are not a political party. It's a political ideology, I guess. Well, I guess in, in saying racial identity politics, that would be a political ideology. So in like my views, I guess that would be a political ideology, believing in true freedom for all people. And first of all, you can't believe in true freedom unless it's for all people. It's, it's a contradiction. Um, but uh, they're not a group that believes in freedom and we'll get to that. So the major part of their platform, there are two things um that are the major parts and they kind of are intertwined. Um, and that's, I guess, white nationalism. Uh, and I would, you know, cut that into two parts, the white identity part and the nationalism part. Now nationalism by itself, I think is bad as well. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute, but, nationalism the other side of that i guess people assume or talk about you know globalism now i don't believe in globalism in the sense of world government and the un and all of that because obviously i don't believe in governments so i definitely don't believe in a world government that's more con- that that concentrates the power in a small amount of people's hands that are controlling the whole world. Now, as far as a global economy and globalism, when it comes to the economy, I believe now for me, it's kind of hard to get into because which I will get into it, but I look at things from two ways. So I have how I think things should be. If everything was how I think things should be. So if everything was how I think things should be, there would be no governments. So there would be a global economy and there would be no countries and none of that. So people would just be trading with each other. Now, most likely it would be more trading with people that are in proximity to you, but that would be for the smaller things. If you were doing uh, business and you had your own businesses you might get supplies from people in other countries and things like that. So I think that all should be, especially, you know, no countries, no tariffs, none of that, and total free trade and a free market, a total free market. We've never had a free market in the United States or nowhere's ever had a free market because the government's always been involved to some extent. And I don't think there's ever been total free trade. Um, so it's voluntary exchange. So there's that. And then there's based on how things are now, do I think there should be total free trade? Yes and no. Um, 
it's hard to, you know, even when you separate things and things the way they are now, it's still hard to say, well, I changed my opinion while this is like this. It's, I still think that if now corporatism kind of fucks that all up, but at the same time, I believe if I want to trade with somebody in another country and you can do this on the internet like eBay, um, that I should be able to do that. And there shouldn't be any, uh, tariffs or taxes or any uh, fees associated with that but as far as globalism when it comes to a world government obviously I don't want a government period so why would I want a world government and even if I did want governments in individual countries I would want the governments to be as small as possible meaning governments governing the smallest amount of people possible because then you can have more of effect on how things run although it's really hard to even do that no matter how small things are but the smaller the better when it comes to uh not only the government itself but the amount of people being governed because again you know your vote being one two two hundred millionth or one of two millionth i mean it really doesn't make much of a difference but i mean it does but it doesn't so it's a huge difference but still when you have that many people voting really what the fuck does it matter you're just getting you know oppressed by less people or you have to go through less bureaucracy to get oppressed. So back to the nationalism by itself, which I hate and really is the, uh, I think it goes together with except exceptionalism as well. So like American exceptionalism and the nationalism as far as, you know, our country's great. Uh, the patriotism goes along with that. Um, keeping things now i don't think this is necessarily a bad thing for a country to do um is to be able to rely at least i i don't think it is with the states so like with a state based on how things are i think that the state should run its economy So it doesn't have to take money from the federal government because that allows the federal government to control the state. Now, based on what they're taxed, and I have no idea, by the federal government, that might be impossible because they might be taxed so much. And some of it goes back to them that they might not be able to uh, sustain themselves no matter what, unless they go crazy with taxes on the people. And that's not uh, a positive thing. So I'm sure the federal government has put them in that position. So to be able to sustain yourself without worrying about the actions of other countries, because what happens is, I guess, I would say that in a world economy, you have to depend on all these other countries. If things get fucked up within these countries, then you're fucked. But at the same time, I do believe in in free trade and all of that um but i don't believe in the whole uh you know the patriot uh, nationalism to me is like the patriotism combined with the exceptional exceptionalism and our country's great and it comes first and basically what trump uh has stood for and has been saying you know as far as the U.S. coming first and the this is a great country and we're better than all these other countries and how uh, that fits into how they run the country where, you know, that leads to tariffs and that leaves leads to trying to keep businesses here um, and things like that. Um, and the, you know, patriotism of the 
loving, really it's loving the government because there's no difference as far as I'm concerned uh, of the country and the government. I mean, that's what a state or the state and the country, it's, it's all the same shit. Because what brings a state or a country together, they're all under the same government. Otherwise, they're what? I mean, it's just land. So that's kind of how I define nationalism. Now, other people might define it differently and how it fits into their uh, platform. We'll get into that. So they're white nationalists. The alt-right is just another word for saying, you know, a nice way to say white nationalist. And the guy who I just played, the Jared, whatever the fuck his name is, he said, because uh, there was a question at this conference, you know, do you call yourself the alt-right? Because basically you're just trying to hide who you are or kind of what I said, like a nice way of, um, you know, saying that. And he's like, no, because of course we tell the truth. We tell who we are. And I mean, they do, but for people that don't go and do research and, and look for these people, if you just hear all right, you're not going to think anything of it. If you hear white nationalism, you're going to have a different thought in your head from the get-go. So, I mean, they can say whatever they want, but why call yourself alt-right? And in a lot of ways, I don't even know how they fit into the right. Now, I don't even know what the right and the left is anymore, um, really. And I, I just look at things as, you know, I call the the, I guess, what the left would be progressives because that's pretty much what, they are and the the right they're a mixture of republicans which are partially progressives and want to control you and uh conservatives which want to control you as do progressives so they all want to control you it's just which way do they control you um sorry before i was uh i cut myself off before i went to that break so Trump, uh, uh, let me uh, go through this first and then get back to the platform. But Trump sent out a tweet for uh, why he's fucking tweeting, man, that I guess there was a flag. They burnt a flag at a college somewhere in New England and that people that burn the flag should be jailed or lose their citizenship. Really, I don't. It, the fact that you can lose your citizenship if you were born here, and what is citizenship doesn't mean shit anyway. It doesn't give you anything. And and frankly, you know, to get rid of your citizenship costs you like three thousand dollars. So if they just take it away and you want to get rid of it anyway, and you don't have to pay for it, hey, that's a positive thing. I mean, is that a threat? Oh, we're gonna take away your citizenship. Well, fuck you then. I don't want to be here anyway. So, or I don't want citizenship anyway. Um, let's be a fucking resident. So, now, Hillary, I think, sponsored, they had said sponsored a bill or had something to do with a bill, even though the Supreme Court ruled on this anyway, that it's constitutional. They don't care. They make laws anyway. Um, but even after that was trying to pass a law about flag burning. So this isn't just a Trump fucking thing. It's a Trump thing that he tweeted it. But as I had said, I did a show, uh, another show on Trump last week or the week before and talked about how, you know, people are all going crazy for nothing, that it's the same thing. Now, people are going to blame a lot of stuff and say, well, it's this is because it's Trump, because you're going to see more less freedoms and more freedoms taken away and all of that because that's their plan and more authoritarianism which you're seeing it start already and he's not even president yet so that's basically what you would see from hillary as well 
that's the plan of, at least I believe, of the powers that be. So they they might blame it on, oh, it's because Trump's president, but it, it doesn't matter. The same thing's going to happen. There's no difference. I'm not going to redo that show. But basically, whether it's Hillary or Trump that was in there, it's going to have the same effect for the most part when it has to do with the important things. And that's the goal of controlling everything and taking away everybody's freedom. So, And Trump is probably the better person to do that because – he is more well it's they're probably equal i think he's hillary might be better because she doesn't come off as badly probably even though she's pretty close cuz i don't think she would tweet something like that but uh it's pretty close as far as who who would be the uh who's worse as far as they'd still do the same thing, but who would come off worse doing it. And I think probably Trump because he's an arrogant fuck and he'd be like, yeah, I did this and tweet it out or something. So he's already said he doesn't give a fuck about the First Amendment and neither does Hillary. And that's the whole point is these guys are out there to use and exploit whatever they can to take away your freedoms. And that's what they're going to do. And, you know, Trump talked about it. Hillary kind of talked like, you know, around it, but all you got to do is look at what she did when she was secretary of state. I mean, that's you know, and all her statements about Snowden and whatever. I mean, they're, they're the same and that's just how it works, but I'm not going to get back into that whole, uh, Trump conversation regarding that if you want to go back and listen um I think it was show 357 so you can go to the archives and any of the places I mentioned and all the links are on the website nonpartisanlibertyforall.com where it will bring you directly to that website to listen to any of the archives uh out there and every show we've ever done is on Spreaker every show we've done probably in the past year and a half is in a lot of other places, but, uh, the shows, probably the shows that I'd say don't even listen to cause the sound quality isn't that good. And, and some of the older, older shows, like the first 20 or something are <laughs> suck because I first started doing, that's when I first started doing shows, obviously. So it, it took a while to get better, but that was before I had the equipment I have now. So essentially all the shows with, the uh good equipment or when we upgraded or on most of the sites but everything's on uh spreaker but anyway so getting back to white nationalism so that's basically their major things it's the white identity politics or white uh european identity they they want to use european and put it that way i guess and nationalism and how they define that they come out and go specifically into what they support um so essentially and some of it is just totally it's not historically really correct um in a lot of areas but whatever and of course again i support free speech and i support their right to say this and i support their right to do you know associate with who they want as long as you know they don't hurt anybody and they don't uh you know uh damage anybody's property but they of course support white people in america so First, they try, you know, if you heard like a short interview, it would sound like, well, we're like, we're just supporting white people in, in this country and, and defending white people and making sure that uh, we're looking out for white people. And of course, it's a lot more than that. So according to multiple sources uh, rich including richard spencer um 
their claim is that America is a white Christian country, that white Christians built America, and it's their country, and they own it. And that's where <laughs> there's all these contradictions, and we'll get to those, so don't worry about it. Um, one of the things they, they had mentioned is they want whites to be with whites, to breed more whites, to sustain the white race, and to further the white race. I don't know even why you'd give a fuck, to be honest. I mean, I could care less. My fiance is Mexican. I don't really care that my kids will be half Mexican. Um, I've dated all races before and if I would have had kids with any of them and they were you know half black or half Native American or half Filipino <laughs> whatever the I'm thinking of all the girls um the races I dated half Indian um or part Indian and part black and um one of the girls I dated um it wouldn't matter I don't I can understand wanting to pass on your genes. Um, you know, like you, you you living on. But what does it matter? I mean, the other half of that's always going to be somebody else. What does it matter what race they are? It, it really doesn't matter to me. To be honest, it wouldn't matter to me if in a thousand years from now there were no genetically no white 100 percent white people because i i don't really care that's not something of importance to me um what race somebody is or if they're tan or white i just i don't get the the uh whole you know this is a whole movement really based on this so um i i really look at them as supporting white supremacy even though they deny it they say they don't support white supremacy but they want whites to be the dominant race although they don't want to rule over other races that's what they said but I, you don't have to want to rule over other races to support white supremacy I think white supremacy, the way I define it, would be that, and they are. I mean, if, if the majority of the country in government is white, then that would be ruling over all other races. Um, so I would think that, I mean, in their statements, how can that not be white supremacy if you're saying that, the country, at least white supremacy within America, that it's their country. It's uh, a white Christian country. They built it. They own it. It's theirs. I mean, these are things that they've said. Uh, so uh, all, I mean, basically all of them. So uh, this is their, uh, all the ones that at least that I listened to. So this is their uh, platform. Um, this, I don't get, they talk about celebrating European values and most of these people don't even know like where, <laughs> like what they are or what their ancestors were. And usually it's so far removed that what the fuck do you care? See, I understand if somebody's, you know, you have Irish people that have St. Patrick's Day parades and celebrate Irish culture or Scottish people that wear skirts. My, my, uh, on my mother's side, my grandfather, he was born here, but I think either his mother or his grandmother was born in Scotland. So my cousin, one of my cousins as a, uh, he had died, not my cousin, but my grandfather um, I think maybe a couple years before that, he had a Scottish wedding. I wouldn't have done that, but, you know, if it makes you happy, you know, whatever. And um, 
I guess it was nice and everything. I saw pictures. My mother went and told me about it. And, you know, celebrating that celebrating Scottish heritage or Scottish culture or traditions. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, what they're doing is just taking white people in general and saying that we want to celebrate white culture and white identity and whatnot. And first of all, no one should be ashamed or embarrassed or not be proud of who they are based on their their race or ashamed. But they're not promoting any culture. They're saying European because, you know, most white people uh, originated in, in Western Europe. So, but it's not like they can connect it, most of them, to any culture. So that's kind of a, a cop out to say that they're celebrating European values and European. I mean, it's really Western values is what they're they're saying. You know, when people talk about the West, it's basically the United States, Western Europe, Canada, um, you know, probably some other couple other countries, maybe Australia, even though it's not in the West, but I. It, I think people would count it, I guess. So they're really talking about Western culture as a whole and Western values. And that's not, I don't know that I would call those white values and white culture. I mean, there's not really a culture of it. And, and, the only culture really or values that I would associate with that, they don't believe in anyway. And we'll get to that because it would be supposedly freedom, even though that doesn't exist um, in any of those countries. And most of those countries are moving towards socialism or already have in countries like France and even in England. So, there is a difference between an actual culture of a country and celebrating that and saying, you know, I'm proud to be Irish or Italian and having some type of, uh, especially if you're connected to it from a couple generations and you're talking about people that, you know, they don't, they don't know. There was one guy who was like, yeah, I think on one side I'm French and I think on the other English. But that was like uh, before the Revolutionary War. So how the fuck are you connected to any of that shit? You know, that, and that's how I look at it, to be honest. I'm just, you know, I don't even look at myself as an American anymore. Um, I'm just a human that was born on earth i mean i'm i was born in the united states you know on depending on what side of the family you could go back five or six generations i think at least um all my grandparents were born here i have no real connection to any other country now if i did and I celebrated that or somehow held on to that culture, you know, that's fine. But that's not really what they're doing. It's like they're coming up with that after the fact. They're just talking about skin color. And it's, it's that's where it gets kind of ridiculous. And, and how do you define white people? Just if they look white, they're white. Um, so that part of it to me is total bullshit. They're just about, you know, white people. They're not about any type of culture or any type of uh, identity or anything like that. And they're not even into American culture. And like I said, we'll get to that. So they're white separatists, which means, and 
uh, to be fair to them, they say that they don't want to, you know, they don't want anybody else except, I guess, immigrants or people that are here illegally to leave that they don't want to hurt anybody or anything like that. They just want their own little white society, I guess, or in white neighborhoods, and they want to live among other white people. Um, As I mentioned, they said America belongs to white people, and that's another flawed statement, and we'll get to that uh, a little later. They're anti-Jewish, and of course, I'm my father was 100% Jewish, so um, I guess they wouldn't like me because, I mean, depending on who it is, it, like I said, different people have some different differing opinions, but I think overall they're, they're all anti-Jewish, but it's just how far they go. You know, this one guy went into, well, they run the banks and they run the world and the big conspiracy of the Jews and all of this fucking shit. And then you have people that are just, they're in general anti-Semitic um, and they're against, you know, Jews and, and Muslims. Not to the point where they, you know, I don't know that they consciously hate anybody, to be honest. But there's obviously hate and not wanting to be around other people and in their whole philosophy. But I don't think they consciously sit there and like, I hate these people because they're of this background or of this race. They just want to have a white country for white people. And they made an analogy of Japan or actually some, actually a, a, a black uh, guy who I have his clip will play it uh, made an analogy of Japan and you know, everybody in Japan, the majority of people are Japanese, but uh, the Jared, whatever his last name is, um, and I don't really want to promote him, um, said he grew up in Japan and Somebody had said something about if you go to another country, it wasn't him, it was another guy. um, You're not, you know, like if you go to Italy and immigrate there, you're not Italian. Whereas with America, if you come here and you're here five years and get a become a citizen, you call yourself American. And there is a difference with America compared to other countries. And, you know, I can see kind of the point there, but I can see the other side of that, too, that we'll get to. Um, but the fact that in America belongs to white people. Now, if they wanted to take, like, Europe and say... Certain countries in Europe, you know, that are, you know, England or Ireland or Scotland, country France that are white, majority white countries that white people originated there, I would say, sort of. I mean, I know if you want to go back in history and whatever, you know, that the first bodies were found in Africa and whatever, but. And a lot of this shit, when we go back to some stuff, I think it's really irrelevant, some of it, because, you know, fine, it's fine to look at history and go back, um, depending on what it is, um, well, regardless of what it is, and go back and look at things, but to the way that they do is go back and say, well, everything that was built, you know, in this country, the ideas came from white people. And that was from uh, the Spencer guy. You know, everything was out of the minds of white people. That doesn't mean, because people of course said, well, they didn't build everything, 
Um, and then he said, well, the ideas came from white people and they built this country and whatever. And, you know, I would say that's not accurate, but even if it was, I mean, going back to, okay, even the people that say, well, the country was founded on Christian values and white Christian values or whatever, and that's not totally true neither but let's say it is what does that how how is that relevant now so it's fine to go back and look at history but i think a lot of the relevance of certain things is irrelevant at the current time especially when nobody that was alive back then is alive now it's just you know, even looking at slavery, which was a horrible thing, and you can't blame people alive now for slavery, which no one living today had slaves or was a slave. So it's like when looking at some things, you know, yeah, the history is what it is. But as far as the relevance when it comes to how you look at people or how you judge people or holding people responsible for things that they had nothing to do with that weren't even alive is, is totally ridiculous in, in in my opinion. And and there's some of the stuff that they get into, whether it's true or not, and most of it is not, but it's it's still irrelevant. Now, if if they were talking about Europe, and I understand that they, with especially with all the Muslims coming in, and I understand that um, what they're saying. So, say in Germany, where you have all these Syrians coming in, that that's going to change the culture and eventually the government. So. Hmm, that's another reason not to have a government. But if you have different people with different values coming into your country or that believe in a different form of government, that's the only thing I can really relate to, I guess, when it comes to immigration, because I, I don't believe that a government owns a country or has the right to tell somebody, you know, where you can go and where you can't go. I understand with the setup of governments and voting and things like that, although I think everything's controlled anyway, but changing all of that by having different types of people come come in, I understand if, if you look at the U.S., and I, this is not why I think this has happened. These are the elite and basically you know, what they have done to take away more freedoms. I don't think it has anything to do with, with immigration. Uh, but at the same time, do I want people here that don't believe in the same values that I do when it comes to freedom? Now, I don't care about personal values, but as far as do I want people coming into the U.S. that want to pass more laws to limit my freedom? Well, no. Now, can you stop that? No. But so I understand people's rationale. But at the same time, you know, I don't believe that governments have a right to tell you, well, this is our, you know, the government owns the country, basically, is what they're saying. Because if I want to have somebody over my house that comes from another country what about private property? What about uh, my right to have whoever I want on my property? So I understand the rationale because if you believe in whatever, when it comes to the government, obviously you don't want people that, coming in that are bad for those interests so i want people 
coming into the country. I don't give a fuck what they are that believe in true freedom and liberty. And it doesn't seem like a lot of people from dictatorships in those type of countries do, or it's not that they don't, it's that they look at America, and I saw kind of a documentary that it wasn't trying to show this, but this is what I got out of it, that, yeah, compared to their country, America is total freedom. So people coming over from countries that are dictatorships or are everyone's poor or things like that where they don't have a lot of freedom and then they come here and they don't realize that it's an illusion of freedom because they're coming from a place where the freedom was non-existent. So it's in that sense I understand. Now, at the same time, I don't think there should be any fucking wall and I don't think there should be any border patrol and I don't think there should be, you know, I think people should be able to go wherever the fuck they want. So, but I'm just saying I understand if that's your rationale, I understand. Now, if your rationale is, which people have said, that, oh, there's going to be more of this race in this country and I don't want that. Now Stefan Molyneux who I believe now is more almost on the alt right, but took by race and tried to back up with uh statistics that people from certain countries and how them coming into the country you know, would affect things like freedom. So looking at, you know what I mean? So not looking at it from a, well, it's this race of people. It's saying that this race of people vote this way and they want their, their support, even though I think it's, it would happen anyway, but the more support, the better to come into the country because they support the agendas of more government. Not because they are of that race, but that statistics show that people that come from these countries support more government. So basically the same rationale is people having ideas that are contradictory to yours. And that's really all I care about when it comes down to it. I don't give a fuck what race somebody is. I don't relate to a race. I don't, you know, I mean, I'm going to have a half, I guess, a quarter Jewish, half Mexican. um, And then I guess the rest white kid. So, and I I don't care. I mean, I I hope they're, uh, you know, cute as a baby and stuff. I don't want them to end up ugly. Um, But that doesn't fucking, I could care less. I don't need to reproduce more white people. But if if I was with somebody that was white, then, you know, that's fine too. But, I mean, it wouldn't be because I need to. There's people that they they purposely, and I'll read a quote from um, that was posted uh, on YouTube about, you know, reproducing more white people. So the other thing is they believe in one of these guys, this Vox Day, whose real name uh, I forget who found out when he was 35 that he's part Native American and part Mexican, but didn't, that didn't change his, uh, I didn't, he didn't give percentages, but it didn't change his feelings as far as being a white nationalist or really white supremacist. Um, they believe that there is white genocide going on, and they call, he called it a soft white genocide because 
genocide people would think you know of what went on in germany with the jews and and there was the one guy the same guy who i mentioned earlier about you know having five or six generations or seven and not knowing not even being sure where his relatives were from but of course he's a white nationalist talking about you know questioning the holocaust and maybe it was you know four million or maybe it was who gives a fuck i mean whether it was four million or five million or six million or two million i mean does it really matter does that make it i mean it does make it worse you know the more people that died but millions of people died what does the exact number mean and he was you know questioning the number and that's fine if you want to question the number but why even bother unless you have some evidence like people try to try to say that it didn't happen and there were you know i guess if that's true then all the people that survived that witnessed people dying i guess they made up all their shit too and i'm not one for just believing you know media and stuff like that but this was back when you know i don't know if you could totally trust the media and what went on but you know obviously um there was a genocide of jewish people and the number that was given was six million if it was five million would it make a fucking difference no I mean, you had a guy who tried to annihilate a race of people. And that's where I get into the whole thing is Jew, Jews are religion or a race. And I, I would, I, I believe race. Otherwise, I wouldn't say I'm Jewish because I don't believe in organized religion. And you could tell, like, my father had, like, the features that, my father had and i don't know so anyway you know stuff like that and it's just it, why are you sitting there wasting your time on oh well the exact number was 5.5 million or something or it, it's just it's just ridiculous now that doesn't mean that because 6 million Jewish people died in uh, the Holocaust that, you know, Jewish people can do whatever they want and not be responsible for their actions, obviously. And, you know, and I'm not saying this because I'm half Jewish because I, I only experienced it like once because you can't tell um I mean, nobody would know unless I told them. But when I was a kid, somebody said something, whatever. That was like the one time. And again, because nobody, nobody knows. But when it, people seem to hate Jews more than anybody else, seriously. And I just, I. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, and I know black people will say, well, white people hate black people more than Jews. Um, I don't know if they hate them more. Like they abuse them more because they can like the police can get away with it or the courts, you know, they definitely get abused more. But I don't know that they hate them more. Um, and of course I'm talking about racist white people. Um, but it's like, what the fuck? Anyway, so they believe in this white genocide by things like lowering birth rates, that there's not enough white people being born to replace white people because of course you know two people have one kid so two people would have to have at least two kids and you know things like that um also mixing with other races 
I, I don't know how, I don't know, whatever. I was going to say how, I mean, you're still part white and what the fuck does it matter? And, and immigration. So they're saying that there's a white genocide kind of conspiracy, but it's not a direct, you know, wiping white people out. It's just kind of reducing over probably thousands of years, reducing white people. And as I was saying with Europe, so like comparing it to Japan, I guess if in England, you know, they said England's a white country, it was founded by white people and all that shit. I guess they would have a case. Um, now, that doesn't mean, you know, Japanese people don't not let white people come into their country. Um, China is totally different because they're a communist country, so I don't even know how that works. But I don't know how hard it is. I know there's white people that live in Japan. So it's just not a huge influx of uh, people, I guess, of um, other races than Asian coming to Japan. But to say that you don't, you, you don't allow, I guess if they just said they don't allow immigration, period, I mean, that would be their right as a country. But they... You know, if they want to talk about Europe, that's different. We're talking about the United States. So, you know, you can't combine them together and say it's the same thing because it's not. It's not even close. You know, these countries have been around thousands of years and... I don't know, you know, there's the theories of the Pangea and whatever, where every all the continents were together and then they, you know, whatever. But at a certain point, you know, that's where we'll say white people came from pretty much Western Europe. Well, no, not just Western Europe, Eastern Europe too. Um, and then it depends where in Eastern Europe and then, there's, I don't know what you would call uh, Muslims that are not black, but not, I mean, they're not white, they're tan or whatever. <laughs> um, but I don't know what you'd say the race would be because Muslims not a race. Um, there's plenty of Christian people in that area. Oh, Middle Eastern, I guess. I don't know. So anyway, um, so I can understand that. Also, depending on, this is something I think that varies, but that the uh, Jared fucker uh, had mentioned, you know, they feel they have superiority when it comes to, you know, men over women, their religion and their culture. And I still don't know what the fuck their culture is. Because, again, what is European fucking culture? Each country has different culture. That's why it's bullshit to say, you know, white culture or European culture. You can't say, it's like saying North American culture. Well, you have Mexico, you have. Uh, or the Americas culture. You have South America, Central America, Mexico, United States, Canada. It's totally different. And although the countries in Europe are somewhat similar, I mean, they're still different. So this whole um, thing, it, it's like a backtrack. It's like, okay... Well, how are we going to explain the, you know, saving the white race and the white culture and the white? Because they're, they're, the whole thing is, in America, there is none. There's not a, and that's the whole thing. That's the whole point. 
And that's why Europe is totally different. If you live in Europe and you're in France and you're saying there's all these Muslims coming in and their laws are changing and it's changing the country and, you know, this is a white country or not a white country, but a French country with French culture, then you have a point. Just like the Japanese would have a point if they said, you know, if they all of a sudden had an influx of whoever, white people or people from Africa or people from the Middle East. And they said this is an Asian or, or no, not, I, I don't even want to say Asian. This is a Japanese country, Japanese culture, Japanese language. And we want to live amongst the Japanese with those intact. But see, you don't have the same thing with America. And that's the point. Just because white people are the majority, it's not the same thing. Now, well, I was going to get to this later, but I'll mention this real quick. So at the most, we know America, going back to, if we count it from the Declaration of Independence, you know, it's 240 years. Now, if you want to go back to the settlements, I know there was Jamestown. I think the first there was the first settlement that like disappeared. I think it was at Roanoke, Virginia. But the sixteen, you know, the Pilgrims are sixteen twenty. So, if you want to count, you know, the sixteen hundreds, it's four hundred years. And I don't even really count that. I'd count from maybe seventeen, the seventeen hundreds. So, that's a little over 300 years. Now, these countries in Europe, you know, go back thousands of years. And countries around the world, um, whether they're still the same country or not, but civilizations, I mean, go back tens of thousands of years. I didn't never took a well, the last ancient civilization class I took or that we went through was fucking uh what sixth grade. I didn't take ancient civics in high school, but I think that's the last time I actually studied that, although I did take history of the Far East. Um but I mean I believe you go back, you know, ten thousand BC and you know, I don't know how far back the first civilizations were, you know, I remember the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, um, and whatnot, but they were tens of thousands of years ago. The U S even if you say 400 years, I mean, that's nothing. And unlike the majority of other countries, and we'll get to this, the U S was existed with people before the United States. Most of the rest of the world, not going back to the beginning of civilization, but at least going back far enough, are the people are where they were. where they ended up after Pangea and whatever, cavemen and, you know, the ancient societies. And I'm not an expert on any of that, but it's kind of irrelevant. The point being that that's kind of how it ended up at that point. And the same ended up with the United States as well. Before it was the United States, it was a piece of land that was inhabited by people. And we'll get to that. And that's what kind of, you know, throws this whole thing for a big loop when they, uh, based on their agenda. So politically, and and this is where they kind of fuck up too, because politically, 
their culture is not based on the Constitution. So they're not people that say we want to preserve the values of this country of the United States. Although they do say of the West. But either way, the values of Western culture would be supposedly freedom, even though it's not free. And things like the Constitution in England, the Magna Carta, um, democracy, you know, all of these things, right? But that's not really... uh, I mean, it partially, I guess they would probably say they believe in democracy and all of that, but they say that when it comes to a lot of things, they believe in socialism. They're against free trade. They're, of course, nationalists. Uh, They, you know of course, on the borders, want those cl- close off and don't want a- any immigration except from white countries. And, and this is fucked up. So if white people are here illegally, they can stay. But every other race got to leave because, as I said earlier, they had said that, you know, this is a white country. So it's OK, I guess, if white people come here illegally. But if not. If it's another race, then you have to leave. Again, this is their... I don't believe in any of their shit, of course. Um, But that's their... uh, political kind of platform, I guess. And they're obviously status. Um, They talk a lot, at least Spencer did, a lot about identity and he made up some fucking word i dena something um and the only you know they call themselves alt right but the only thing that i would say they have in common with the right is some of the social values with conservatives and not the ones that have to do with social programs and stuff like that because they support those but what would be called like traditional values and that's my kind of interpretation what i got from them that it sounded like they only support traditional values and when freedom was brought up that they don't really support freedom now i'm not fully clear on their stance but that's how it came off that they seem to only support their values of white nationalism and traditional values, similar maybe to like the 1950s, how it was or something. And I don't know whether they want to have laws to enforce those values because these are things that they didn't get into. So I don't know. But when freedom came up, it was that you know what kind of freedom are you talking about and people don't almost like people don't deserve certain freedoms and so supposedly that's part of american culture but they're not uh adhering to that or believe in that so they can't believe in european culture They don't seem to believe in American or what's known as American culture, at least politically or, you know, not even politically, but freedom. And so it's they really they're similar to nationals. Their stance is similar to national socialism, which is Nazis. Now, the only, with all, I guess, due respect to them, well, I don't owe them any respect, but I, you know, they have the right to believe what they want. 
they're not violent. They don't want to eliminate any other races. They don't want to uh, have any type of um, genocide of any races or anything like that. At least so they say, but they really come off that way, to be honest, that's nonviolent and and peaceful. And so they really seem like they believe in national socialism, which is the Nazi party, without the elimination of other races and the genocide and the violence and you know, that part of it. Because, I mean, you take their politics and then the white nationalism, um, the socialism uh, that's in there. I mean, it, all of it t- mixed together. I mean, that's what I come up with. That's the conclusion I come to, that they are pretty much national socialists, that they're, they're, they agree with the Nazi party, again, except for the fact that they're and this is this is a big thing you know they want to do things through government through the system they don't seem to have the the same hate at least publicly they just seem to want to be together with white people and everybody else can just go do their own thing, but they don't seem to hate them per se. So, and this is a long way from, there's a video that I'll play and I I think he did a good job with the video, but it was one of the points that was made and I'll play this in a minute was that, and and I've seen comments about this too, that it's white people just um, looking out for white people the same way any other race would look out for their race and white people are criticized for that. And it's not that though. And I'm not saying that, that would be okay neither um i'm not saying that wouldn't be okay but it's a lot it goes way beyond that you know where they're saying that the country belongs to them and that it's they did all the work they didn't do shit and that's what i'm talking about when i mentioned history they weren't around they didn't build nothing um they didn't come up with any ideas they didn't invent shit now I guess that's not true technology wise in the past, you know, 30 to 40 years. There's plenty of people of different races who have done things. But as far as, you know, the Industrial Revolution and, and you know, all the years before that, um, that led up to, you know, from the founding of the country all the way to the early 1900s. Um, and most people that were born in the ni- early 1900s are, are dead. There may be a few people that are, you know, uh, in their late 90s or 100, but not many. David Rockefeller, I guess. Um, but it's, I mean, that would have to be, you know, like 1920s, really or 19 teens. I mean, everybody else born before that is, is dead. So, so they, as I had said, they, they don't have the same views that the country was founded on. So, they're contradicting themselves and when they talk about Western culture because what what is Western culture if you're going to actually put it together? And Western culture, I would say, is things like supposedly freedom, even though they don't practice it, free markets, um, 
you know, capitalism, things like that. And these are all things that they don't believe in. So they don't really seem to even subscribe to Western culture or values. And maybe some of the values, I guess, I don't know what we would uh, define as Western values per se, but let me play this uh, this video real quick. And he actually gives a a fair opinion about what happened with, uh, I guess, as I brought up earlier, they did like a Nazi salute when they they did hail Trump and it, and, and the uh, Richard Spencer said that was more like a joke because they called them Nazis and whatever. And, and really, like I said, they kind of, I mean, their beliefs kind of fit in. Um, but I think he gave a fair representation, but I think I disagree because it goes beyond what, uh, I think he gave them too fair. I think he was too fair with them. I'll put it that way. So, and, and he's actually black as well. So let me play this real quick. And when we come back, um, we'll get back to going through, uh, some of their contradictions. We'll talk about the libertarians versus the alt-right as far as how those can get lumped in together. And we'll talk about some other things as well. Freedom of speech and how Trump kind of ties into this as well as where I think well, are they racist? But I've already kind of said yes, but what makes them racist? And so we'll talk about all that more when we get back. And we'll be back right after this. Make sure to check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. And I'm trying to find the video now. I just had it. <laughs> and we'll be right back after this. Hey, what's going on, everyone? So today I'm going to be talking about the alt-right. And uh, I normally don't talk about the alt-right because, honestly, I didn't really know what the alt-right is. And I've seen videos from, like, Armored Skeptic, and I saw that awful video from Cult of Dusty that a lot of people have been refuting. And um, I'm starting to kind of understand what's going on. But then, out of left field, there was this video that's been going viral. Uh, a bunch of uh, mainstream media has been picking it up. It's from a conference, uh, an alt-right conference, and this guy named Richard Spencer gave a speech you know, talking about just, you know, stuff that's been happening recently and uh, a lot of white nationalism and basically, you know, bas I just need to show you the clip. Here's the clip that everybody's been freaking out about. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! So yeah, just on the surface, it looks pretty fucking horrible. That that looks awful. It looks like there's a bunch of Nazis in there and stuff like that. And uh, it even confused me where on Twitter, I was like, you know, I need help understanding this. And uh, because I kind of always thought that like, the alt-right was more of like an alternative to, you know, just uh, your mainstream conservatives, your rhinos or whatever, or your, um, like say the whole meme culture, you know, like say the whole Pepe thing. Just a lot of people that are on the internet, a lot of young uh, conservatives that are just like, you know, energized, and uh, that's what I kind of thought. And then all of a sudden, I started hearing people saying, "Oh, they're racist, they're Nazis, they're nationalists, they're Stormfront, they're they're all this shit." And I don't know, I didn't really get it. But now I'm starting to see a little mix, and I don't know. I saw the whole speech, and I saw some other stuff that was going on. I want to know who the hell Richard uh, Spencer is. 
and I'm kind of starting to understand things now. So after watching the speech, there's two things that I learned about Richard Spencer. One is that he's definitely a white nationalist. Despite these supposedly egalitarian values, America was, until this past generation, a white country designed for ourselves and our posterity. It is our creation. It is our inheritance. And it belongs to us. And the other thing is that he's definitely into meme culture. This was the year when random shitlords on Twitter, it's not just that they are leftist and cucks. It was that moment when we knew Keck had smiled upon us. Pepe! So based on some of the stuff in his speech, it seems like uh, there's a little bit of white nationalism and some meme culture kind of mixed in there. It seems like what people are saying is maybe there's some truth to both sides or whatever. But um, I won't say that they're just inherently some racist Nazis or something like that. You know, even though there was that, uh, that evidence, that footage of them doing like some Heil Hitlers and shit. Well, like pretty much in defense like of Richard, he was saying himself that like, oh, it's kind of like trolling and stuff. And that there was people that were there and they understood and, you know, that there's it's that kind of culture to fuck with people and they're not just inherently just racist cunts but you know they're just kind of like proud of their own you know their heritage they're proud of being white and stuff like that kind of the same way that people are proud of being black or chinese or what the fuck ever so i want to show you this little clip that i uh stumbled upon where he's kind of like talking about that incident um at at the conference you know let me just pause that for a second and, ad and let's just address that because first uh, out of the gates, I mean, this is, the, I just find this hilarious, to be honest. I mean, M Mike, you invited Mike Enoch from TRS up on stage uh, and he kind of, you know, initiated this, the, the Roman salute as a, as a way of joking about yes. this. I mean, frankly, l l let's just break this down, Richard. I mean, the media has projecting upon us uh, Nazism, Nazism, Nazism for what d a decade now or, you know, over four or five sure. years. And so some of the response of this has, of course, been to kind of adopt that almost in a stereotypical way as a way of dealing with it. I mean, to it's been, fun it's been used as a weapon against us. And now we're fighting back by disarming them, by joking about this stuff. It's, it's about throwing it back in their face. You know, it, it's a, whenever there's an authentic movement of identity that is th coming from Europeans, European-Americans, you know, we, we've heard it all before. You're Adolf, you're literally Hitler. You're literally the KKK. You're literally uh, the Southern Confederacy, so on and so on. And I think at some point we just want to throw it back at their face. So hopefully with some of these clips, you guys can kind of gain a perspective on what's going on with it. And it kind of showing you that the mainstream media is kind of freaking out a little bit too much, you know, because just like I, I kind of understand, like at first I was thinking, OK, yeah, there's a bunch of Nazis at this thing. But I seem like I, 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 would, I imagine that they're actually more trolls than just Nazis. Like I don't just say automatically white nationalists, people that are proud of being white or whatever and where they come from and stuff are just inherently racist. You know, I don't, I don't think that's a thing. And just looking into it, yeah, like it's people, they like fucking with people. They already know that they're being labeled racist and all this stuff and all and deplorables, all this horrible shit. So they're kind of embracing it. The same way that I embrace the coon thing, I get called coon a lot from a lot of black people or whatever the fuck. So yeah, I embrace that, you know, that stereotype or whatever, that negative label and by creating I am a coon. And you should check that video if you haven't. Now I'm sure a lot of liberals and people of color are probably freaking out seeing this stuff and they're like, oh, look what Trump's doing, look what he's bringing and all this stuff. And I don't think it's Trump. I mean, Trump pretty much denounces like, you know, racism and all this stuff. And he said plenty of times that he he's down for the LGBT community. He's down for uh, Latinos and uh, and African-Americans and stuff like he, he wants to help out all these people. And even in the speech itself, Richard Spencer says that, oh, uh, Trump has been compromised, too, because he's for affirmative action. See, he, um, if you listen to that speech that he played, and that pretty much uh, was said a lot of the things that I said when I went through their platform, that they own America and all of this shit. And that's where, you know, um, to listen to that and come to some of uh his conclusions and uh just to give him a plug he does some some cool videos um i think he's that just called that black guy or some black guy some black guy he does some pretty good videos and and i i think he did a good video um with this and i think he did he was fair but he was too fair because 
again, he goes and he's, I mean, the video is only, it's only half over. So I'll uh, play the whole thing and, and maybe chime in again. But for, there's one thing, you know, he mentioned, you know, being white and being proud to be white. Um, I mean, you should always be proud of who you are, as I said earlier, not be ashamed of who you are. And I know he brings up, and I don't know if he's done it yet, uh, the media, you know, attacking, and I'll talk a little about this, you know, attacking white people in that, you know, the white privilege thing and all white people are racist and, and things like that. And he uses that as an excuse for, why um i'm saying some some black guy i don't know his real name so is using that is, is an excuse for why you know they're coming out and getting pissed about stuff like that and saying well we're proud to be white and but that's not what they're doing you know if they did that i it's not something i would do <laughs> or i would agree with because again i mean i don't identify with race like that i don't look at race like that but if they were to do that that's one thing you know if someone says you know that they're proud to be white and that's bullshit what they're saying you know as far as um you know, white privilege and that all white people are racist and whatever, um, things that government media are doing, I think to, you know, cause division. And it's, it's all, it's all orchestrated by the government because basically they're trying to cause division. They want people fighting amongst each other because then they don't focus on the government. Like even the whole thing with police, it turned into a race and now no one's talking about the police anymore. At least I, I, you know, I'm not seeing it talking about doing something about the police, meaning should just get rid of them. And when I say get rid of them, I mean, you know, fire them all. Um, And they did it by distraction, by turning it into race and making people, you know, fighting back and forth about whether it's about race or not. And really, what does it matter? People are dying that are getting killed by police. That's the point. And that needs to stop. And it's all people. But, you know, I, I think black people are focused on more. But at the same time, you know, if you focus on just the racial aspect, look what happened. It just turned into just focus on the racial aspect, not the police being the problem and, and, and doing something about it. So um, my point so far uh, with his video is just that, you know, I think he's cutting him a, a little too much slack, especially after that speech saying we own America, America is ours and all of that bullshit. You know, if if they were just a group that said, look, we're just sticking up for white people. If white people are attacked by black people, um, we're going to stand up for them or speak out. If, you know, white people are attacked in the media or they're going to be blamed for, I don't know. I'm just thinking of examples. That's f- you know, again, that's not how I would go about things. And I, I don't necessarily necessarily agree with that but that's totally different that's not what these guys are about so let me continue to play because i didn't uh i listened to the whole thing but i uh while i've been playing it i haven't been listening so i don't know if he got to that part yet but i'll probably chime in again And he's for all these things that help out minorities and stuff like that. So it's not Trump. These are just people acting on themselves, saying that they want things a certain way. They want they want America to be for uh, white America. They want it, you know, and and the thing is what I understand what they're saying, because when you think about it, you got to think about this, that, you know, uh, the United States is predominantly white people over 60 percent. So 
when you have people, when you have the mainstream media shitting all over white people, saying how evil they are, how racist they are, backing up all the fucking horrible rhetoric, all the racist rhetoric coming from the left and Black Lives Matter and all this stuff, a lot of people are getting sick and tired of it. And so they start creating conferences like this, talking about we need to look out for white people because we're being marginalized now. Because what the fuck's going on? Like, this was a country of white people, you know, for a long time. And all of a sudden, you know, now you're acting like white people are completely irrelevant. Could you imagine going to other countries? Like, say, for example, could you imagine going to China where it's obviously predominantly Chinese people? And then you kind of like say you're maybe a minority of white people and saying that, hey, we need you all to cater to white people like... Uh, all Chinese people are racist and uh, you're so privileged that you don't matter. You don't need to be taken care of anymore. Can you imagine what the fucking Chinese people would be doing? They'd be like, get the fuck out of our country, dude. See, but that's that would work. And that's what I said. If you're talking about England or France or something like that, then, OK, then you have a point. But America is totally different. And we'll get to why. Um you know, America has a 13 percent black population. And I don't know what the percentage was. I was going to talk about this later uh, when I refuted their uh, some of their points. But that was brought over by these people that he talks about that built the country. So, you know, we'll talk about that in more detail. Um. And I don't look at America as a white country. Yes, it is majority white. But as far as it's a white country, um, you know, there's his, a Hispanic population. There's an Asian population. And I guess I can, you know, go through and look at, okay, what were the percentages years ago? But I'm also going to talk about the fact that the West was, you know, at least one fourth of the country was part of Mexico that the United States took. And when they actually came here, there were already people here, Native Americans. So that's why it doesn't it doesn't work. Now, as far as what he said regarding um you know people saying okay well the the stuff the media is saying and stuff like that and then as i said earlier being upset about that and saying well we're going to look out for or, or uh i guess stand up for white people i guess um if somebody did that again i don't agree with it not something i would do but Okay, but that's not what they're doing, and that's what that, that's the whole point. And it's not a, a good comparison, the U.S. looking at it as a white country compared to Japan. Um, if you took England or France, then it, it you know I understand that. And if if they're saying say in France or Germany. Germany's not the best example, but because of the things that they've done in the past, but still um, Muslims coming in or whatever and them saying, well, you know, a bunch of Muslims are coming in and, and they, they want this or that or whatever. Um, I understand and I'm not saying that it's right or that's what they should do. I'm just saying I understand the analogy that that's a a analogy that fits um but these guys are not about that that's what i'm saying they're white supremacists even though they deny it but they want the supremacy of white people they say we own this country we built this country we, which is again it will go through our the history of that and and again as i brought up earlier you're talking about at the most 400 years not even compared to you know thousands where these are areas of the country of the world where certain races came from like asia where you know asian people <laughs> um in europe 
most of Europe were white people and the Middle East is Middle Eastern people and lower Africa is black people. I mean, that's kind of, you know, the United States was not white people. White people did not come from the United States. So that's where there's that difference. And for them to be there, and and I mean, even if you go back, what, 150 years, half of the country, again, belonged to Mexico. But we'll get into uh, some of those details later. Go back to some country where white people are completely catered to. And so that's kind of like what they're doing. And I get it. I understand it because I would be fucking offended. If I was white, I would be really fucking pissed off at all this rhetoric saying that I'm automatically racist, that I'm automatically privileged just because of my white skin. Like motherfuckers living in trailer parks, you know, they're automatically privileged, I guess. Yeah, see, there he definitely has a point. Um, and I've talked about white privilege before, and it's bu- it's bullshit. There are a lot of privileged white people, um, but not everybody white is fucking privileged. And there are privileged black people as well. Not as many, um, but there are uh, a lot of successful black people. Now, the media wants you to think that all black people are poor, and they want black people to be poor because they don't want anybody who, uh, you know, fucks up their narrative. But... There are plenty of successful black people. There are plenty of black people that are going to college. I do think it is a little harder in general. Now, in general, for black people, and it has been, but I think it's getting easier. But I still think it's a little harder for black people than it is your average white person. Is it harder for, you know, I don't know, think of somebody, Puff Daddy's son? than your average white person uh probably not or you know johnny cochran i don't know if he had any kids before he died i believe he did you know his kids uh than your average white person no and and there's a whole bunch of white people on welfare and trailer parks you know collecting food stamps and not only that the people that are successful You know, I can't speak for other people. I can only speak for myself. But a lot of people had to work really hard to get to where they're at. And, yes, I do think black people have to work a little harder um, in general. But I understand people being like, what the fuck, you know, that have worked hard to get to where they are. And the white privilege uh bullshit but i i don't know you know getting mad about stuff like that is just like um i i don't know i i don't think there's i understand i guess if people get mad i, I know i don't know but um you know getting mad enough to start some fucking organization where you kind of go off the rails like uh, the alt-right is not, you can't justify anything they're doing. Now, you you can justify people getting mad about being called racist when they're not and the white privilege, what he was just saying. You can, um, but you cannot justify anything that the alt-right is doing. Yes. Motherfuckers that are sleeping on the street and don't have any food to eat are just automatically privileged just because of their fucking white skin. Now, to the contrary of a lot of stuff that Richard Spencer was saying, you know, I don't really, like, I'm not really down with uh, the whole, like, white or black national or, or just pride itself. Like, I'm more of a, like, hey, we're a human race. Let's just try to work together. And what? Yeah, exactly. And that's that's what I had said earlier. Like, I don't identify really with a, a race. It's just like, hey, we're all humans. And what I want to work together towards is is freedom for everybody, you know, freedom for all people. Because, again, it's not freedom if it's only for certain people. That's not the definition of freedom because we have that now. There's certain people that can do whatever they want. The elite can get away whatever they want. It's, you know, the rest of us that can't, that don't have freedom. So, you know, freedom in itself is about all people. 
One thing that I've always championed, I talked about it in a few videos, is Martin Luther King Jr. You know, his I Have a Dream speech, his ideology, things that he wanted. He did a lot for this country. You know, a lot. He brought a lot of us together. And then, unfortunately, you have a lot of people on the left that are completely fucking destroying that. You know, they're they're wanting segregation again. They want uh, they're, they're completely dividing us. They're saying like white people this, white people that, white people this, white people that. I mean, it's pretty obvious that we're like you know the United States isn't just a white racist country because obviously. Obama would not have been able to be elected because, like I've said, it's white people predominantly in this country. So obviously white people had to predominantly vote for Obama. So that kind of already shatters that whole notion that they're just racist because obviously that wouldn't be able to happen. So I think that if there was... I don't think Obama being elected means there's no racism. But I think what he means is that, you know, the majority of people are not racist. Um because obviously there's a lot of people that didn't vote for Obama neither. But just because you vote for somebody, I would say if you vote for, for somebody for president that's black, most of those people, uh, I would assume, are not racist, um, especially people that vote, you know, that actually went out to vote um, and and that meant something to them. Um but that doesn't mean that there's no racism just because, well, there's a black president, so uh, racism has ended. But we're not, it's not 1965 neither. And we've come a long way. And you have the government really is behind it, I believe, to push their agenda to make it uh, like. It is, you know, 1965 and there's all this racism and there's all this division and whatever. And they're they're the ones creating it. And. It's it, it, it's frustrating in a way, but it's just they're trying to divide people at the same time. They're using it to exploit an agenda and that agenda leads to less freedom, more control by the government over everybody. Doesn't matter what race you are, you're going to be, you know, a slave to the government. I mean, essentially, everybody is, in a sense, a slave to the government just on a giant plantation because you're working for them. You're paying them, you know, a percentage of your pay. You're being extorted. So, um really i mean it's it's nothing compared to what slavery was but it's still you know you're you're like a serf so much of this fucking racist rhetoric or anti-white rhetoric coming from the left, from the far left, that a lot of this stuff wouldn't be springing up. There would be little pockets of racism like they've always existed. Like you talk about the KKK, which there's less than 10,000 members. How fucking irrelevant is that when there's over 3 million people in the He meant 300 million country. I mean, come on. You're going to have some neo-Nazis. You're going to have all this dumb bullshit. And all you have to do is just ignore and laugh at them. And now you have like a little thing like this happen. And it's kind of like, I would say, maybe some of those people do fucking are hiring Hitler. Maybe they do believe in that shit. But I mean, if they do, it's kind of fucking silly because nothing's going to come of it. Nothing's going to come of it at all. It's the, and, like, and like, trust me when I say this, there isn't going to be some huge fucking group of just white racist motherfuckers just taking over the United States and marching all over and having fucking massive Trump banners and stuff. And if for some reason, if that does happen, I will eat my fucking words. <laughs> All right, so the last thing I just want to bring up is I want to ask people that consider themselves in the alt-right, like, the stuff that th uh, this Richard Spencer guy, uh, make sure you check out this speech, you know, it's like a half hour or something like that. Do you agree with what he's saying? Is this what the alt-right is? People like, what is the alt-right? I mean, because I'm having a lot of people um, telling me that this is like COINTELPRO, it's just the media spinning stuff, and it kind of seems like there is to a certain extent. However, there is some very deep, um, you know, white nationalist rhetoric within his speech that a lot of people resonate with. Yeah, and that's the whole thing is the media does try to spin stuff, and they did take that uh, Nazi salute, and that's what they showed. But no, this is what they stand for. And I made sure I did fair research and got their side of everything. And this is everything that I've said 
has come out of their mouths, the people that are the leaders of this thing and are part of the alt right. I, you know, I took it from them, not from the government media who was saying, going around saying what they stand for. I took from them what they stood for, and not just from one of them, neither, from a bunch of them, and listened to various um, interviews and things like that. So that is what they stand for. And, you know, when it comes down to it, I, I truly believe that they are nonviolent. I, I, I do. Um, they're like, I think somebody said this, like uh, maybe he said it or somebody said it, like Nazis and suit and ties or what not. But they didn't say Nazis. But I mean, they're like Nazis with. I wouldn't know how to explain it, but, you know, I did earlier without the violence and stuff like that, but they're like a Nazi party, I would say, that they're not like the, uh, what you think of a Nazi, like like American History X or something, like the um, guys that are going around beating people up and harassing people of different races and stuff like that they're not like that they're like a professional <laughs> a professional nazi i guess um in that you know they believe in doing things through the system and organizing and and doing it that way not in hurting people and uh, committing acts of violence or anything like that. And maybe it's by running for office or whatever. Now, which that ain't going to do anything anyway, because the, the system, uh, not going to get much done through the system. Although if what you're trying to get done is to take away more freedom, you will. But uh, these guys are, I mean, I don't really take them that seriously. I take them seriously in that they believe what they're saying, but there's not that many of them. They're not a political force, and I don't think they'd ever be able to do anything. You know, I think they're always going to be a tiny minority because the majority of people don't believe this bullshit. And what they're saying, you know, if they were presenting one side when they were really another, uh, maybe they could suck some people in. Uh, but uh, nobody who has any, well, unless you're a racist, I'm going to say who has any intelligence. But, I mean, these guys, I guess, aren't stupid. They're just racist, I guess. <laughs> So it kind of seems like it could be like borderline racist, like white power stuff like that. So I just want to know, people that consider themselves all right, is that what you're about? Is this? Do you agree with the the white nationalist red, uh, rhetoric, or is that bullshit? Or just just give me an idea. Let's start a discussion. I really am like interested to see what people have to come up with, especially my audience. Anyways, let me know what you think of my analysis, and I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And Papa bless as usual. Hey, what's going on? I'm at the mall, just editing the video, and I just want to give a shout out to my super sexy patrons that is mark hail trump hail our people hail victory No one will honor us for losing gracefully. No one mourns the great crimes committed against us. For us, it is conquer or die. The mainstream media, or perhaps we should refer to them in the original German, Lugenpresse. <laughs> it's not just that they are leftist and cucks. It's not just that many are genuinely stupid. Indeed, one wonders if these people are people at all. <laughs> or instead, soulless golem, 
animated by some dark power to repeat whatever talking point John Oliver stated the night before. <laughs> to be white is to be a striver, a crusader, an explorer, and a conqueror. We build, we produce, we go up. No, to, to be white is to have lighter skin and depending on where you're from specifically, uh, your physical features. That's it. That's all it is. Word. And we recognize the central lie of American race relations. We don't exploit other groups. We... G- We don't gain anything from their presence. They need us and not the other way around. Well, obviously, that's a bunch of bullshit right there. You can't go back through history and then ignore certain things. And if he didn't bring history up in the first place, then fine. But he did. And, you know, there was an interview with him, and I forget the guy, um, a black guy so he he went on his show so i guess i'll give him credit for that but you know they did need other people they had slaves obviously they needed them to do something and they this bullshit you know the chinese built the railroads that's not bullshit um he had brought that up as well um so they do need other people. I guess you could say that nobody needs anybody else, really, if you have enough people. But it's not because of your race. Um, you know, people, if you have enough people that can do enough things, it, what does it matter? But he is saying it in terms of, well, us white people all together, we don't we don't need anybody else. We don't need need uh other people. You know, we we're like super humans or something cuz we're uh, of white and- ancestry or whatever. Within the very blood in our veins, as children of the sun, lies the potential for greatness. That is the great struggle we are called to. We are not meant to live in shame and weakness and disgrace. We were not... Well, nobody's meant... Okay, I I will say on that, nobody's meant to live in shame. And if, if people stand up and say, look, I'm being called, you know, like I was saying, a racist and not all white people are racist. And, you know, that I had privilege. I'm not saying me. I'm saying if this is what he was saying again, and I have to keep saying this. So people just turn in. I don't agree with that. It's not the route I take, but I don't think that's that bad i mean i don't think there's anything wrong with that um but that's not what they're doing they're not you know they are white supremacists that they want their you know to rule the country because they say it's their country now they say they don't want to rule over other people but how can you not if you rule over the country? Um, I don't, I don't understand that. And it seems like now, again, this, this part is, is hard to all the interviews I tried to find. I tried to find the, somebody's view on this and I found his sort of, and again, he said, I would, I, I should go back and get the quote, but when it came to freedom, that basically, you know, what is freedom anyway? And uh, it depends on the freedom and that essentially it seems like he wants to push his values onto everybody else. And that's what I get and lit from, from him. Now that's just my interpretation, 
and live in this society that's ruled by all white people and everybody lives by his values or, you know, I assume that most of those people share those values. I think that's where they might differ a little, but that's kind of what I get. Meant to beg for moral validation from some of the most despicable creatures to ever populate the planet. We were meant to overcome, overcome all of it, because that is natural and normal for us. The press has clearly decided to double down and wage war against the legitimacy of Trump and the continued existence of white America but they are really opening up the door for us. America was, until this past generation, a white country designed for ourselves and our posterity. It is our creation. It is our inheritance, and it belongs to us. Are you looking for a podcast that talks about life, the universe, and everything? Listen in to the Illumination Hour, Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Listen live at Spreaker.com or NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. We're also on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, and iTunes. The Illumination Hour, brought to you by Nonpartisan Liberty for All Media and Radio Network, and your host, Ellen Stallone, because a spark can illuminate the world. You are listening to Nonpartisan Liberty for All Radio with your host, Dave Bourne. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. I love the song, actually. Violent from Tupac. Um, so I had kind of talked through those uh, two clips, but I got where... Like I said, I only know him as some black guy because that's his uh, YouTube name. And and he does some good videos. Uh, so, you know, check him out. But I thought he gave him too much slack on that. Because, again, it, it wasn't somebody just complaining or speaking out about government media and how, you know, they do some fucked up things or whatever and saying that, you know, he's, pr I mean, I guess saying you're proud to be white, how is that racist? Somebody, a, a black guy wrote an, a comment on one of the videos, like, you know, saying you're proud to be white how is that racist black people say they're proud proud to be black and this was a black guy writing it and i don't i see one difference and i don't know that that's racist if you say you're proud to be white but the difference i see is in what i got into earlier if you're talking about a specific country if you're Irish because no one no one says anything about that or says you're racist or that's a negative thing to say if somebody says I'm proud that I'm Irish or I'm proud that I'm Scottish or I'm proud that I'm whatever they might be that Nobody criticizes people for saying things like that, as they shouldn't, because 
it's the culture that they may like or be a part of or still celebrate some of that culture. But when you just say white, it's just, it makes it about skin color and a whole different thing. And with black people, it's different because it's different in in one sense, is that you have a percentage of black people that were brought over here that don't even know their ancestry or what country they came from or their culture. I mean, they know the continent at Africa, you know, their ancestors. And not every black person has, uh, you know, slave roots, first of all. And let's be honest about that. You know, I don't know what percentage of people today are ancestors of slaves. And that's probably something that I could find out, but I don't know how accurate those statistics would be. But because of the things that black people had to go through and slave, you know, not just slavery, but after slavery, there is a little difference there, I believe. So when someone says that they're proud to be black, you know, what else, you know, they can't say I'm proud to be whatever from whatever country if they don't even know what country they came from. And the people that do, you know, like Jamaicans have come over, come over here and, and they'll usually say I'm proud to be Jamaican or whatever. But it's different in that black people were put down for so long. And and that's, I think, where that stems from. Um, and even when it comes to other minorities, they don't say, you know, Hispanic people usually, as far as I know, won't say I'm proud to be Hispanic. They'll say I'm proud to be Mexican or I'm proud to be Puerto Rican, even though it's not another country. It's, you know, but it's a U.S. Commonwealth or I'm proud to be Guatemala. I don't know, whatever. So there isn't much of a double standard when it comes to that because again people that say that they're proud to be from or have ancestors in a certain country especially the irish because they always you know you got notre dame and people wear the fighting irish stuff and you had house of pain and nobody got mad that people were celebrating being irish and no one gets mad on saint patrick's day um, and I just bring up the Irish because that's the most common, I guess, uh, of cultures that are brought up, but Italians as well. I don't know that there's, um, well, I guess Columbus day, even though Columbus was uh, pretty fucked up, but he never actually came to what's now known as the United States. He was in the Caribbean, but supposedly, according to, I think, his diaries, I mean, he was a, like, sadistic fuck. But they were proud, I guess, based on the stories they tell you in history class because they don't tell you the truth. But still, I mean, nobody says, oh, you shouldn't be proud to be Italian. And, you know, some people that have like an Italian restaurant or something and celebrate that, whatever. So that's really the issue. I mean, that's not the whole issue here, obviously. 
But that's the issue with people that talk about, well, I'm proud to be white. It just, it kind of, you know, I mean, be proud to be who you are. I'm proud to be who I am. But to be proud to be white, there's like no culture associated with that. There's no nothing associated with that. That's why I think it's, you know, fucked up. If you talk about a specific country, every country has customs and cultures and certain things that are associated with that. And that's the difference. And with black people, yeah, it is different because of things that happen. So if somebody says they're proud to be black, I don't consider anything wrong with that. Whereas when someone says, well, I'm proud to be white, I, it's like what, there's no, uh, it doesn't mean anything. It's, it is, you know what I mean? There's nothing behind that except what is, I, I don't know. I mean, that's just how I, I, I feel about it. You know, and if people say that as long as they're not racist against other people, you know, that's their right. But there's a difference between people saying that they're proud to be white or people feeling that they're being discriminated against or they're being, you know, uh, targeted by the media, social justice warriors or whatever. Um, and the extent that the alt-right is going to, there's a huge difference. So where we kind of left off is with their political views and their uh, contradictions. And so I want to make sure I get to this. So I'll go back to as far as the libertarians versus the the differences between the libertarians and the alt-right and how they could even be thrown together. Um, I think that's pretty obvious, but we'll get back to that. Um, because li- real libertarians, not the party, believe in the non-aggression principle, which means they don't believe in government. You know, people could say whatever they want about what libertarians mean, and people can call themselves libertarians and all that shit. But if you believe in government, you're not a real libertarian. But many of the aspects that they left out, okay, first of all, when it comes to this history of we built this country and it's for us, uh, what he was saying, um, and I'm just quoting him, I'm not saying uh, I built this country or anything like that, but obviously he didn't and he had nothing to do with it. He's 38 years old. But they failed to recognize, one, again, you had a certain percentage of black people that were brought over here uh, against their own will and forced to work, who helped to build this country. Not only when they were slaves, they obviously helped to build the country, but contributed to culture, and I know people will say, a lot of people would say, well, in a negative way in a lot of ways, but ha- but there's so many contributions from black people when it comes to American culture, especially with, you know, the entertainment industry, but there's black people that have done, uh, a lot of other things as well. There's black a- academics, philosophers. Um, of course, Fred- Frederick Douglass comes to mind because he was one of the, I would say he was one of the first, because obviously, you know, there were free black people before him, but, you know, he was an escaped slave and, and what he accomplished. But to say that, you know, 
there's no contribution there and that it's not their country is is bullshit. I mean, you can't kidnap people, bring them over here, and then have them have, you know, generations and generations full of kids. Um, or not full of kids, but you know what I mean? Generation after generation, uh, they've been here. And then say, well, it's not their country. Well, if you wanted an all-white country, then why did you bring them here in the first place? So, and then, of course, you have, I don't know how many, but you have a lot of black people that came here on their own from the Caribbean and from Africa. So it it wasn't just uh, via slavery, but there was a a large percentage obviously that that came here from slavery and we're here at the beginning. So, I mean, that's just a bunch of bullshit. Um, you also have about a quarter, more than a quarter, Texas, Nevada, Arizona, California, New Mexico, and Colorado, were all part of Mexico up until, I believe, 1848, which was only 150 years ago. So that belongs to white people. That's white land, even though Mexicans lived in it. And I'm sure many of them stayed there when the United States took over that territory. And have been technically in this country, although, you know, it was Mexico, but in the land that they're in for a lot longer than a lot of white people. Then you have Florida that was Spanish territory until 1819, which Mexico, I believe, was under Spain until 1821. So I would look at Florida the same way. So that's seven states, six of them being, uh, I think, in the top 10 area wise. I know Nevada is number seven. Texas is number two. California is number three, or it might be the other way around. So that's a lot of land with a lot of people. Never mind that, when people came here, white people from Europe, there were already people, native people, that lived here just because they didn't have an organized society in the same way that Europe did does not make them any less uh what's the word i'm looking for any uh less entitled to that land than white people it actually makes them more entitled to that land it actually makes them fully entitled to that land land is a weird thing um as far as who owns the land and all of that shit. And that's another story. Uh, But it definitely wasn't the people from the other country who came over. So how does America belong to white people? And of course, most of the Native Americans were wiped out. But so, you know, they don't mention any of those things. Yes, America is majority white because that's who came over to a country that was inhabited already by natives that were not white. 
and took it over. So how does that make them entitled to it and feel that they own it and it's all and I mean with Mexico the again this was 1848 the country had already been around for well almost 100 years so that's what I mean if they want to get into history there's that history as well and you can't just ignore that and say, well, this is a white country based on, and the whole based on Protestant or Christian values, the majority uh, were at least the most important people that wrote the Constitution and formed the country were deists, not Protestant and not Christians. But that's forgotten very quickly so I mentioned all the these three members that I found or the two of them one of them uh, oh yeah I didn't mention mention Vox Day who I said found out at 35 um, he was Mexican and Native American and what's what's funny is that you know, you have these people that ca- are calling themselves anarchists. I don't know if Chris Cantwell still is. I mean, th- this guy fits right in with the the alt right. Um, he's actually in some ways worse, where he's on a show calling people niggers and saying all this fucking shit, racist shit, and whatever. Um, and then you have Stefan Molyneux, who has Vox Day on, who has Jared Taylor on. And they say this stuff on his show, and he just kind of sits there and, you know, he doesn't question them on it. He doesn't seem to object or disagree with anything they're saying. And they've talked about, uh, Vox Day talked about the alt-right. He said right on the show, basically, all of the things that I said at the beginning that they stand for, both Vox Day and Jared Taylor said on Molyneux's show, and he continues to have them on. They've been on more than once. And he calls himself an anarchist. And almost every show he does now is on Trump. So I don't know how the fuck this guy's an anarchist, but okay. People talk about how great he is and whatever. I mean, he can be entertaining. I like listening to some of his old uh, calls when people call in, or even some of the new ones. They call in about, you know, for advice and shit. Especially when people call in for, like, relationship advice. It's a good uh, way to get my mind off of, you know, other shit. So... As I said earlier, of course, they have freedom of speech. They have the right to their opinions and they have the right to associate with whoever they want. If they only want to associate with white people and they want to have a community that's all white and they want to get together and buy up all the houses there. I mean, that's their right. As long as they don't hurt anybody or their property. Then that's fine or the one thing I think they do want to do is push their belief through laws on others. And now that's not illegal, but that I have a problem with. But people don't have the right. Richard Spencer, I guess, during that conference said that uh, he got sprayed with something. And, you know, people don't have the right to use violence against them unless they attack them physically first. Just because they're saying things, and I will defend them in the, in this, because they have the right to say this stuff. They have the right to this opinion. Now, I, I think personally, as I said, I, you know, I think they're a tiny percentage. Um, the government media loves shit like this so they can focus on it and make people think that a huge percentage of the population feels this way 
and it goes right into their narrative that they're trying to exploit and divide people and whatever. This is a small percentage of people that, you know, aren't going to do shit. And, and, you know, that's my opinion, but I think they're harmless, to be honest. Um, you know, as far as their ideas go, I would classify them as racist, no doubt. Now, I don't know that it's... It doesn't seem to be based on hate, although I don't know how you can have those ideas and not have hate within it, if that makes sense. So I I don't think they're consciously thinking about, well, we hate these people. I think they hate the Jews, maybe, but (laughs) no, but I don't I don't think they uh think that way i think they just think about the advancement of the white race i don't know that they think of well we hate this race or we hate that race um consciously but i would say that to have those ideas and want to segregate yourself and want to be only around other white people and to believe these ideas that America is only for white people and that white people built everything and they're entitled, the sense of entitlement that they have to the U.S., that white people is for the U.S. I mean, the U.S. is for white people and all of this shit that they have. Obviously, I think that comes from some kind of hate, but... There's no violence. They're not promoting violence. They're not talking about anything violent. Um, That doesn't mean that no one in their group has, you know, thoughts of violence. Um, But I, you know, as long as they don't, commit any acts of violence and I, I don't see you know seeing these people they, they they're more academics than anything else um at least the ones that I know of the ones that are getting the attention um but they're you know white separatist white supremacist I mean there's a bunch of names you can call them um but I think for them, it's it's not about, you know, getting rid of anybody or hurting anybody or whatever. It's just kind of getting away to somewhere that's all white and, you know, separating themselves from other races. And I don't agree with that. Like I said, I mean, it seems like there has to be some hate there but it's not it's not blatant so um i wanted to read this quote that i saw posted on a youtube page and i think it was cantwell's after uh he had the 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 uh whatever the fuck his name is, the main guy. Um, Richard Spencer. Richard Spencer didn't make this quote, but somebody you know posted this on YouTube in the comments. It says, white people, we need to have many, many white children. This person's retarded because they did it in all caps. Are in with other white people. Each white couple, uh, Cantwell says the same shit as well, that they, you know, white people need to breed with uh, all white people. I I don't know how he's going to, you know, he should go looking in the fucking trailer parks. Um, You look at this motherfucker. Uh, Each white couple should have no less than five white children. More than five is better. Yeah, again, the, the trailer parks with the 
you know, 10 kids and no teeth and shit. Preserve our race and build up the numbers of our race. If you're not doing this, then you are helping diminish the number of our, our race and eliminating our race. This, the numbers matter and will make a difference for the future, for your children, for your grandchildren, and beyond. Take care of your race, our race. Protect your race, our race. Rebuild your race, our race. Do your part. Have many, many white children. Yeah, well, my children and grandchildren um, are going to be, you know, part uh, Mexican. And if also Jewish, so I don't know... Uh, you know, I guess they they'd hate them from that anyway. So not Jewish and religion, but you know, race, I guess. So, um, yeah, it doesn't matter to me if uh, there's nobody around with really light skin, or there is, um. So, I mean, it's just for what, though? Like, I understand, again, like spreading your DNA, like you want to have a kid and have your genes go on, and they will, but it, I, I just, I don't know what to say to that. I I don't um it's just that's how somebody feels that's fine for them to feel that way I I just don't get it I, I'm more about you know finding who I you know the person I love and that I'm attracted to and I don't really give a fuck what race they are. So, you know, I think limiting yourself and I think it's fine for people. I don't think there's anything wrong with if white people only want to date white people or black people only want to date black people. I I think that, you know, it's not me. I mean, I've, like I said, I've dated every race there is. Um, but people have a right to make their own choices on what they want to do is again as long as they're not hurting anybody or hurting their property so if that's what you want to do then go fucking do that have five find a white person stay with white people tell your kids to stay with white people if that's what you want to fucking do i feel bad for those kids but you know, in general, why limit yourself to, you know, there's great people of all races. Why limit yourself? And now I'm only going to date this because I have to. I mean, this whole thing to me is just, it's not a joke, but kind of. I mean, it's hard to take these people seriously especially since you know they're not violent because i'm not looking at them as any type of threat because they're really not they're just i mean they are what they are and you know fine that's your opinion and um you have the freedom of speech to do that to say what you want to say and that's fine um regarding Trump um they kind of not criticized him but they they don't say he's part of their you know the alt right or anything like that they say that they support him for you know his nationalism some socialism immigration of course is the biggest one and keeping business in the US and being against globalism so uh, some of their policy, his policies, I guess, fit with them. Although, again, he's going to do what the powers that be want him to do. So we'll see 
what happens during the Trump presidency, but it's going to be about taking away more freedom. Now he may do some of those things, um, while he's taking away people's freedom and Hillary would have been taking away people's freedom as well. But why be concerned with this fucking shit? I just, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, these people are dedicating in, in, in their whole lives to this. And in, in, in the, even in the video I had mentioned earlier, like a lot of the people, I think I mentioned earlier that are asking questions like they blacked out their face or didn't show, they wouldn't show their face because they don't want to be, they don't have the fucking balls to come out for what they believe in. Whereas, you know, I'm, now what's fucked up is I don't know what people would think is worse. I I hope them, (laughs) but if people would think they're worse or I am because I don't believe in government, but I, you know, I want people to be able to do whatever they want to do as long as they don't hurt anybody. I want that for all people. I want freedom for all people. They just care about white people and they don't even want free. I, I don't even know that they want freedom for white people. They want a certain life for white people. Uh, to to follow their fucking values or whatever. And I I want I gotta play this one more time because this is fucking. You know what he says in this speech, and this is what they all say. Okay, so this is just not him. I've heard. Other people say the same thing and not using the same words, but Vox Day said it on Stefan Molyneux's show. So Stefan Molyneux is not a fucking anarchist. He is not a voluntarist. He is not any of those fucking things. Okay. And he lives in Canada anyway. Not that that makes a difference. I'm just saying like this, like, I, I don't know. It's weird because a lot of this stuff has to do with the U S and they're talking about the U S but what does he think about what about Canada is Canada a white country? I don't don't know. Our people hail victory. No one will honor us for losing gracefully. No one mourns the great crimes committed against us. For us, it is conquer or die. The mainstream media, or perhaps we should refer to them in the original German, Lugenpresse. It's not just that they are leftist and cucks. It's not just that many are genuinely stupid. Indeed, one wonders if these people are people at all, (laughs) or instead soulless golem. To be white is to be a striver, a crusader, an explorer, and a conqueror. We build, we produce, we go upward, and we recognize the central lie of American race relations. We don't exploit other groups. We... We don't gain anything from their presence. They need us and not the other way around. The alt-right, short for the alternative right, sees itself as an important, righteous, organic movement on the Internet. They say that their goals essentially are to combat feminism, Islam, political correctness, to protect the borders of white nations, In general, they want to preserve white culture, whatever that means, and or Western culture, whatever that means. And they want to empower populist authoritarian government leaders that are willing to carry out these goals. Corporate media has largely ignored the alt-right, of course, until recently when Hillary Clinton mentioned it in a campaign speech against Donald Trump. All key tenants making up 
the emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. But anyone who actively participates in or just observes political discourse on the Internet, especially on YouTube, blogs, and message boards, has been well aware of the alt-right for quite some time. The alt-right is basically a combination of conservatism, white nationalism, and anti-interventionism combined with the Internet, which is its crucial ingredient. Memes, trolling campaigns, and attempts at intellectualism via Photoshop and different Internet-isms, as well as affinities for outlets like Breitbart, and often even more extreme websites like the Daily Stormer and the Right Stuff blog. The alt-right hopes to be a new sort of revolutionary movement, even though it's mostly just derivative of other movements. But in reality, the only thing that makes the alt-right novel or noteworthy is their relationship with the Internet and troll culture. Progressives have distaste for the alt-right for obvious reasons. Their nativist, xenophobic, white nationalist tendencies, their love for what they call traditional white... But it's only in the last few days that the mainstream has started talking about it. Last week, Hillary Clinton attacked the alt-right in a big speech, which led to coverage in every newspaper and online outlet across the globe. Hillary blamed Breitbart.com for mainstreaming racism, which she said was proven by Trump's embrace of the alt-right. CNN and Fox News both aired clips from the Rubin Report in which Milo Yiannopoulos talked about the alt-right, explaining it as a counterculture movement uniting disaffected conservatives with mischievous internet meme makers. The usual pundits suddenly were all experts on the alt-right, even though they didn't know what it was while it was growing right before their eyes this whole time. Our outrage culture always needs some new outrage to be outraged about, and once Hillary mentioned the alt-right by name, it meant the movement had officially arrived. The alt-right seems to take many different forms, depending on who you talk to. Mainstream media and pretty much the entire left brand the alt-right as a white supremacist movement rallying around Donald Trump. Their members hate blacks, they hate Jews, they hate Hispanics, and they want some sort of racially pure country to stop white genocide. Mainstream Republicans see the alt-right as a group of loudmouthed offensive racists who are tearing the conservative movement apart by throwing away traditional conservative ideals like small government and replacing them with a win-at-all-cost candidate. Others say the alt-right is a grassroots movement born out of natural pushback to our increasingly political correct society. I think if you mix some of those explanations together, you get what the alt-right really is, but you have to add one more thing, the internet. The alt-right, whatever version of it you claim to be, was created right here on the internet. And as something created by the internet, it is as amorphous as the internet itself. What the alt-right really is, though, is a band of meme posters, anime avatars, and Twitter eggs vying for attention from people in power. They post Nazi memes, racist pictures, and offensive tweets with the express intent of getting powerful people to react or respond and thus amplify their message. They are keyboard warriors and professional trolls trying to get attention from the sold-out and corrupt media and political elite that we have. The real alt-right isn't about one political ideology as much as it is a loosely linked group of people using the tools of the internet to upset the establishment. Ironically, in some ways, this wrangling and mocking of the establishment is exactly what the Bernie revolution was supposed to be. But while Hillary put Bernie's revolution on ice, she has now elevated the alt-right to mainstream status by giving a big speech about it. The alt-right wants attention more than anything, and they trolled her into giving them exactly what they want. Let me back up here for a sec, because I don't want to gloss over that whole white supremacist, hate the blacks, hate the Jews, kick out the Hispanics thing. This portion of the alt-right absolutely does exist. I see it on Twitter every single day. You can pause this video right now and find thousands of images, including Nazi imagery, racist caricatures of minorities, and plenty more. Do a quick search on Twitter, a scan on Reddit, or a look at 4chan, and you'll see some pretty nasty stuff. I don't like it, but you guys know my policy on free speech and free 
free expression, so I choose to ignore these images and ideas rather than amplify them. The real question, though, is do these truly hateful racist memes and tweets represent a real movement of hate, or are they designed just to get attention? I think it's some combination of both. Some true racists mixed with a bunch of people who just want to mess with those in power. How many of each of them are there? We have no idea. What we do know, though, is that these people wield very little real-world power. Do white supremacists exist? Yeah. Do black, Jew, and Hispanic haters exist? Yeah, they do. Do some people want to keep immigrants out because of racism? Yes. But the people who make up the alt-right aren't the ones with the power. Instead, they are the ones trying to upset the people in power. And as for Donald Trump, he has blacks and Jews and Hispanics on his campaign staff. This doesn't mean there aren't racist supporters of Trump. Of course there are, just as there are racist supporters of Hillary and everyone else to ever run for president ever. Trump's blunt language, which has attacked almost every group out there, often blurring the line between being politically incorrect and truly hateful, is just an extension of the tactics that the alt-right keyboard warriors are doing on their own. Personally, I think that the regressive left is more of a threat to our democracy than the alt-right. The regressive left, with its tactics of stifling debate and silencing critics, has gained mainstream traction in our media and in our universities. These regressive, not progressive, ideas have become all too common on the left, and they've actually given birth to the natural response, the alt-right. I know this firsthand, not only from the emails that you guys send me, but also from all the students at UCLA who came up to me after my event with Milo Yiannopoulos a couple months ago to tell me that they're supporting Trump just because they can't take the culture of fear around speech anymore. The alt-right, with its Trump frogs and Photoshop pictures of sick Hillary, is little more than a bunch of guys in their basements using outrage culture Nonpartisan liberty for all. Call in at 702-470-7664 or Skype in. Username, Nonpartisan Liberty for All. Nonpartisan Liberty for All. And that's about all the time left for tonight. I'd just like to leave you with my, I guess, conclusion after looking at the alt-right, which I, I've pretty much said already. I mean... Essentially, they're nonviolent Nazis without the genocidal thoughts and the amount of hate. And they're more of a academic Nazis or uh, suit and tie Nazis. And as far as they're definitely racist, uh, I think there's no doubt about that. I don't know how they can say that they're not. And... The bottom line is, do I view them as any type of threat? No. Uh, I think they're a fringe group. And, you know, the media, government media is going to give them as much attention as possible to try to make people think, oh, look at this racist group. And it adds to the amount of, you know, racist groups out there that they can exploit to, again, divide people and another group for people to point to and say, you know, look at the the racism, especially with the connection to Donald Trump, which is really just them supporting Trump. Again, Trump has already started to change a lot of what he said, and he won because the powers that be wanted him to win, and he's going to put in the same agenda when it comes to Uh, certain things that Hillary was going to put in. And that's, that's about it. You know, our freedom is just as much at risk uh, with Hillary in there as it is with Trump in there, because the agenda is going to just keep going and we need to combat that. We need non-compliance and self-defense and, um, we need to stand up and, you know, if we want to have any sort of freedom and, you know, people 
basically we don't have any freedom now. You know, we have a level of freedom, but it's a very small level. And people have that illusion of freedom. So hopefully more people will wake up to what's really important and not the division and the bullshit from government media and all of these things. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We will be back tomorrow with Ken Shorjan of The Daily Economist and Ken Shorjan on YouTube. So uh, check them out there and check them out tomorrow night at our new time, 6 o'clock Pacific, 9 o'clock Eastern. Thanks, everybody. You're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to take it away. We force it. But at the end of the day, each and every man can go home safe. Sometimes the use of force 